court has effectively ended affirmative action in college admissions. Let us embark on this transformative journey towards a fairer, more inclusive educational landscape. And I strongly disagree with the court's decision. The Supreme Court 6-3 decision in Students for Fair Admissions versus Harvard, often summarized as ending affirmative action, is the latest case study in polarization's mortal combat. We are going to continue to fight together and unify and not let those who try to pit our communities against one another to succeed. The Democrats' campaign to delegitimize the Supreme Court will expand, as will demands that President Biden support a bill introduced in May to expand the court to 13 seats. I think if we start the process of trying to expand the court, we're going to politicize it maybe forever in a way that is not healthy. That you can't get back. That you can't get back. The U.S.'s polarization on race-related public policy has indeed become deeply destructive. I'd argue its causes lie not in systemic racism, but in conscious political decisions made 60 years ago. Marking 1964 as a historic year in race relations, on July 2nd, President Johnson signed into law the Civil Rights Act. The political separation arguably began sometime after passage of the Civil Rights Act, which had the strong support of Republican senators. It was quickly followed by President Lyndon Johnson's Great Society program. All out war on human poverty. In effect, liberal Democrats back then said to Republicans and conservatives, step aside. The running of these programs to help black Americans is something that we, Northern Democrats, are going to control. But what is there to show for this social welfare monopoly? Put plainly, their stewardship of urban black America, its education, housing, and family well-being has been a political and moral failure. We all know that the typical family on welfare today is very different from the one that welfare was designed to deal with 60 years ago. The one notable mid-course correction was Bill Clinton's 1996 welfare reform, whose telling title was the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Act. Today we are taking an historic chance to make welfare what it was meant to be, a second chance, not a way of life. That reform has since been repudiated by Democratic progressives, who under Joe Biden have revived the original Great Society idea of direct transfer payments. Most disturbing is the liberal failure in education. The race-based admissions policies of Harvard and other elite schools are the result of so many black Americans being underprepared by their public schools. Time was that a strong public education was a crown jewel in New York City. But in another Faustian bargain to keep their political coalition intact, the Democrats let the teachers' unions degrade into an industrial union that first and last is about the money. We've invested so much in our schools and our counselors and our nurses and administrators. After school programs, summer programs, hiring more teachers, counselors, school psychologists. This travesty of sweeping K through 12 education under the rug was never sustainable, not least because over the past 30 years, a wave of upwardly mobile Asian immigrants have made America their home. Students for Fair Admissions versus Harvard was inevitable. We can now rejoice over the fact that at least our kids can be judged based on their achievements and merits alone. This commentary is painting Democrats with an unfairly broad brush. Some liberal reformers have attempted to break away from the status quo, for example, supporting public charter schools or school choice voucher programs. But they too were pushed aside as the party's social policy agenda was taken over by the Democratic left. If they were a caucus in Congress, they would be the bootstrapper, forced birth, uh, don't say gay uh, caucus. Census Bureau data show that increasing numbers of blacks are moving to the suburbs or to the states in the South. Many cite better schools and fear of crime. The Supreme Court doesn't deserve to be attacked for its Harvard decision it should be thanked for forcing the subject of the 60-year policy failure into the open. State institutions as well have to finally respect the fact that race should not be a part of the decision-making. The check-the-box system is over, dead, and buried.